it's a real pleasure to be here with you, Jenny, to talk about biscuits. Um, yeah, great much. that we were able to adapt to a Zoom chat. Um, yeah, just it's just a really impressive book, really impressive piece of work. I find the drawings of London so detailed and incredible, and the characters also incredibly real and um, mostly quite likable. Um, <laughs> 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 and I, I wanted to start off. the villain of the piece. <laughs> um, I don't know. I'm sure we all have maybe some characters <laughs> that we like more than others. Um, yeah, I think maybe for me to answer your question, probably the, the guy is it Edgar? Edgar's, yeah. Yeah, he's probably like the least likable, but still likable for me. <laughs> he's all right. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's all right. Yeah. Um, but I wanted to ask, start off by asking you about the, um, the kind of cookie cutter shapes of uh, women and um, the kind of visual metaphor. Um, we all read visual metaphors in different ways, but I wanted to ask you, what, what does that metaphor mean to you, Jenny? Um, yeah, well, I have, I have some of them here. So wow. these, are, these are the ones that didn't make it to the rainbow frame that's on the wall at uh, Ridley Road Social Club. Nothing personal to these guys. I just have didn't have uh, enough room for them all, um, and I've been drawing them since I did it um, on this poster. I have as a prop. Oh. Um, so and so initially cool. it was it was just me getting annoyed at um, the way that specifically feminism, but I think a lot of um, ethoses and kind of ideologies that we feel like that we subscribe to seem to require us to simplify the world and to dehumanize people and kind of put people in boxes um and not not that i'm anti-feminist in any way <laughs> um, um but i think it's it's the it's the the labeling of, of of ourselves that we subject ourselves to makes it harder for, harder for us to be individuals sometimes and i mm. think it's something that a lot of people can relate to not not just women but um just any any label that is is applied to us comes with a whole bunch of baggage and expectations and we're people are just always more complicated than that mm. i think yeah yeah more yeah, awesome. no. yeah. yeah i think you're right there yeah and i was curious about about the title biscuits like how how did you arrive at that um yeah, I, I mean i don't actually really remember i think because they're cookie cutters um, initially, the project wasn't wasn't set in London. Um, it was just a random women. And let me just put my phone on silent. <laughs> it was just random women. But um, once I decided to set it in London, which was a sensible idea because I live here, so it's a lot easier for me to um, guess what's going on in the minds of the other residents than it is for people living in other places. But um, once I knew it was here, I kind of wanted it to be concretely British um, in its identity and we call cookies biscuits so it's a, it's almost like a pun on the on the cookie cutter idea but mm -hmm. um, but you never hear like fitting into the biscuit cutter that doesn't have the same kind of ring to it no, no and also um, people have kind of run with it like I didn't really think about it as like a box of biscuits but right from the beginning um, when I uh, did the Myriad first graphic novel prize uh, I think it was uh, Sarah Shafi, uh, one of the judges said that it was like a box of of chocolates uh, or, or biscuits that you could like pick and choose between. So we went with that as a metaphor and like the back cover has that um, mm. kind of menu that you can choose from. And it looks like a biscuit tin, but I, I didn't have any of that in my mind when I, I don't remember what I had in my mind. Yeah, <laughs> when I, when I <laughs> yeah often there's like right. lots of things going on in your mind when you're creating something. Yeah. <laughs> Rich and layered, <laughs> yes. like a biscuit. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, there was a moment, I, I finished the book today and there's a scene where, um, I can't remember, I'm really bad with names, but where one of the characters is offering biscuits in the staff room and I and I just wanted to shout out, biscuits, there's biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, maybe we'll like maybe just to pick up on the on the London like you mentioned, it's very specific to London. And something that I like really love about it is that um, 
Well, first of all, I'd like to say that it, it really reminded me of a film, the, the, the story and the way you drew it and the overlappingness of the characters, the stories, even some of the frames you drew, some of the pages were just amazing, the detail and the overlapping and the way you played with the structure. Um, and I wanted to almost ask you, like, it's almost like you are location scout, script writer, um, and all those kind of roles. And how did it all come together? Like, did you write the characters first? Did you write a script first? Did you take loads of bus rides and just listen to people's conversations and draw them? Or how, how did how did the process yes. work? <laughs> <laughs> Um, I mean, thank you. I think, firstly, that's what's amazing about comics, isn't it? Is that, especially as a, if you're working as a solo creator, you can be um, a, the equivalent of a hundreds of people team that you need to make a, a film because you can do everything. And that means you have complete creative control, <laughs> um, which is, is nice. <laughs> um, but I think, yeah, it was it was very organic. I would say it's organic the way that it grew because I just got in the habit of just constantly taking photos when I was out and about in London. And um, I not so much when I was drawing the book, but before in the before times when I was writing the book, um, I was lucky enough to have um, reasons to go to sort of lots of different parts of London. So I did uh, supply teaching and. Um, a long time ago I used to do events waitressing and I've always liked sort of going to bits of the city that I haven't been to before um, and there's some bits that are just like very samey and in different parts of London which is interesting it's like oh another Georgian terrace but then they have um, differences as well and you can go one street over and like it's all the tiny little details that I, I like um, seeing and noticing kind of putting mm. that into the work and I think it's the same kind of almost my approach to the characters was the same mm. as my approach to the setting. It's like allowing people to be, um, have these little details about them while also having things in common. Yeah, yeah, no, I, that really comes across. And like, I was wondering with the characters, um, I, I mean, maybe this is like giving away too much, but are any of them based on people that you know, like friends or, 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 or even, like yourself I don't know <laughs> I mean, yeah um it's it's I I do I do say that like oh they're all me which is also a terrible thing to say um as you know a white woman writing a book with a diverse cast because I'm not trying to say that uh I can identify with people of all identities um but I think there are things of me in each of them um whereas I also looked around me and noticed things in the lives of my friends or um, acquaintances or colleagues of uh, other identities and did a lot of research as well mm -hmm. um, but I think that's that's kind of the overlapping of our of our experiences and it helps being set in London because there is not at all universal but there is an experience of living in London that um, I guess does center somewhat in diversity because you're used to seeing lots of different faces, hearing lots of different languages, mm -hmm. whether or not you actually engage with that. Because some of the characters in the book don't really, they're just living in that world, but they're living their own lives. Um, but yeah, what was the question? Sorry. <laughs> I, do, I do remember now, <laughs> but I do have another one for you. Go for it. Was, um, do, you have, do you have a favorite character mm -hmm. that you created in between? I think Maya is my favorite. Um, who is the character yeah, who's the always on the phone on the yeah. I, I think because she's in like she she's kind of just always in a state of flux or not really liminal because she's not really I mean like she's flux but she's not changing she's like static um in her situation but constantly moving which um I think is quite evocative of life mm, yeah I mean she certainly is a character that really made me laugh out loud while I was reading. yeah also she's really inappropriate uh, so. it, yeah it really, <laughs> <laughs> I really liked um Clara, Clara. Mm. quite a dry quite quite dry sense of humor and um, deadpan. Deadpan, yeah. deadpan I, I really 
really appreciate her character in the book. But they're all they're all fantastic. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so when I when I finished reading the book, I finished reading it today. By the way, um, when I finished reading the book, I had this like huge rush of like I don't know, just like good feeling, well being, like wow, um, like uh, and I couldn't. I had to sit with that for a little while. In fact, I think I texted you quite soon afterwards, Jenny, with lots of exclamation marks. And but um, there's something about the story just just feels overwhelmingly optimistic to me. Um, and despite the kind of difficulties that all the characters or the women are facing, because they all have something that there is also challenging in their lives, and you you know it's not glossing over any of that. Um, it's really acknowledging it, um, but yet it still feels really optimistic um, by the end of the story. And I, I wondered if you could just talk on that a little bit. Like, yeah, what, what was your kind yeah, of... I, I don't really know how I managed that. It wasn't like, it wasn't in my mission statement, not that I had a mission statement, but I wasn't <laughs> like, I'm going to make a book that makes the world seem like a wonderful place. Um, I think I've always been quite uh, good at laughing in the face of my own misfortune which uh, Nora can attest to that she came to my my flat door on Thursday and and heard me laughing a lot at my positive flow test so um, <laughs> well here we are <laughs> but um yeah I don't know um when uh, Shelley Bond was was very very kind to to give us a, a pull quote for, for the book before it was published and she used the word sanguine and mm. and I had some issues with that um, at the time, I was just like, oh, I don't know, that feels like a bit pretentious or, I mean, I knew that it meant bloody as well. And I was like, oh, I don't mm -hmm. know how I feel about that. But now I've, I've kind of been sitting with it for a while. I think sanguine is a good word for the book, um, which is sort of, it's just slightly, slightly more bittersweet than optimistic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I think it's like, it's, it's how sanguine is like being optimistic despite the world being a terrible place. <laughs> Which is, like um, yeah, which is, I think also, um, it's just, it can be both, it can always be both, like it can be terrible and wonderful at the same time, and that's something I've felt for a long time. Mm. And I think, I believe really strongly in looking at the world as honestly as we can, like, we can't, because we've only got stupid little human brains, and we can't actually mm. understand the world. But, um, you need to look at the good and the bad um and we should be angry about bad things and there's a lot to be angry about but mm. we also need to acknowledge that there's a lot of good awesome stuff and a good awesome people yeah. in our world yeah it's true and i think that's maybe that explains the, the feeling i had after completing the book that yeah that real like wow i just felt really alive and yeah i think that's what that's what, what it does of... also end on a good pun yeah that's <laughs> <laughs> um i wanted to ask you a little bit about um the kind of comic scene i know it's quite a big scene and you know i i'm speaking as somebody who has really no knowledge of the comic and kind of scene or um oh you froze in there jenny do you can you hear me <laughs> Oh, it's good. You yeah, were kind of you, you, singing a little bit. I was I doing a bit of a tune yeah. as well. <laughs> <laughs> Should we just dance? Um, yeah. Um, sorry, going back to my point. Um, someone who, yeah, I don't really have a knowledge of the comic scene, although I'd really like to engage a bit more after this event. Um, you join yeah, us. I will, I will. I will. I really want to come <laughs> to drink, drink and draw. Um, <laughs> but I wanted to ask, like you mentioned in your thank yous, um, ladies do comics and some, a few other people that I can't, I can't remember. But I wanted to ask you, is there, is there a sense that the scene is welcoming and supportive of like women's stories and women who make comics? And is it quite an inclusive space, would you say, from your perspective? I would say um, the spaces that I spend time in are very inclusive um, and it's been a real joy. Um, Obviously, that's my experience again as a white woman, middle class woman. But um, the thing is with uh, comics that I think for some reason, a lot of people in the public fail to wrap their heads around is how much of it there is, because there's not one scene. There's dozens and dozens of scenes um, and they all overlap. And I'm sure some of them are less inclusive. <laughs> um, but the, 
they also do all overlap. So it, it's nice when you have uh, things like Thought Bubble that you can see just the scope of what's out there. Um, fingers crossed that's going to go ahead this year. We'll see. Um, but all of the all of the groups that I've been in, so as well as LD Comics, um, I used to go to Comic Social meetups. Mm. Um, I used to be part of the alternative press as fairs, which uh, I really recommend, by the way, watching, um, if anyone watching this hasn't already seen it, Gareth Brooks's talk about um, small press scenes that's um, on the Hackney Comic and Scene Fair YouTube, because I watched that this morning. Um, and he was talking about this concept uh, by Brian Eno of Senius, um, which is a really cool concept, uh, which is basically just like you make better work in groups and which is something I've strongly always believed, but um, don't always uh, do comfortably myself, like looking for feedback. And I'm always more like, I'll show you the work when it's ready. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but even outside of that, we're always all feeding off each other's ideas just by doing things like drink and draw and talking and mm. responding to other things that we like and sharing influences with each other. So the more people that you can find that share your interests and your passions even if they have a very different perspective on some parts of it I think the better you become as an artist because mm -hmm. the more just the more there is for you to learn from yeah yeah oh brilliant it sounds like a really um yeah the people that you you've been sharing your work with it, the, the community you're in sounds really wonderful um yeah, yeah. so we've got a few minutes left um I want. I wanted to ask you, um, what 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 have you got? What's planned next? What are you working on at the moment, Jenny? Because I know you've. Um, I know you've just finished probably just um, finished biscuits and yeah. promoting it. Um, but well, I am sort of an, in the infancy of a new project, and it's it's. I'm not letting it take too much shape. Um, I've done a lot of little things in the last year. I've did some really. Uh, fun things with uh, Natasha Natarajan for the Cartoon Museum. We did um, collaborative pieces and I did a piece for uh, Colossus Cartographies and the Zip, uh, Zip, Whip, <laughs> Whip Comics, uh, Lucky, Lucky Z and I did that as well. So I've done a, a lot of things. I'm trying to move my practice more towards combining collage and comics. Mm. Um, so I'm going to start making more collage comics, exploring um, ideas around um, what it is to be a female artist and some of the lives of some female artists and how they brushed up against each other. That's mm. the plan. Um, but it's going to take a while to sort yeah. of turn into what it's going to turn into. Um, what I, I think one of the things I really learned from this experience is um, it's okay to not know what you're doing at the start and you'll probably make something better because of it. And I, I already, I think I already knew that as a, as a teacher, but um there's that temptation when you read so many kind of comics and books and films and you see things as this polished piece of a feeling like you need to have the the finished product living in your head before you can do anything with it but you really don't and yeah uh and that's what's exciting i agree jenny yeah i agree yeah you don't have to have all the answers as, as you're as you're creating yeah well, fantastic. Um, before I thank you and thank um, Ridley Road Social Club and everybody else, um, where can people find your, find your work? Where, uh, where are you online and um, all of that kind of stuff? Um, I am lucky enough to be old enough to have my actual name on Twitter. Um, so I'm at Jenny Robbins on Twitter, but um, it took me a while to embrace. I had a, I had a blackberry for ages so i didn't come to instagram until a bit later so i'm at my words fly on instagram uh which is short for my words fly like birds which is what i used to call my blog <laughs> great i like it I like it yeah oh and jenny robbins illustration on facebook if anyone uh, still books their face yeah <laughs> fantastic and i bought my copy of biscuits in gosh um excellent choice you all know but i'm sure you can find it in many other good book retailers across the country um well go in go into shops that don't have it and order it that's the good because <laughs> then they think people want it I, I i think that's a good thing yes it is yeah yeah 
Jenny, thanks so much. It's been a pleasure to meet you this week. First of all, at Soho Radio on, on Monday and now today on Zoom at Ridley Road Social Club. Um, yeah, I just want to say thanks to... Um, who should we thank, Jenny? Should we thank together? Um, yes, we should thank lots of people, but mostly uh, Nora and Joe, um, who've been incredible <laughs> in the last three days <laughs> putting up my exhibition without me. Um, I feel very guilty and thankful um and sad not to be at the party but um they're amazing amazing people um thank you very much guys yeah. um, thanks for inviting and, and to do this. dan yeah. and lara and lots of other people probably that have been involved 